Here are seven of my favorite JavaScript tricks that make writing JavaScript a lot easier. Hopefully you find these as useful as I do. I'm gonna go through them kind of quick, so be sure to follow along. And if you haven't already and you find this content interesting, be sure to subscribe. So now this first trick comes in handy when you wanna remove falsy values from an array. So here I have an array for my name and in it I have true, undefined, and Narla. And now undefined takes place of my middle name. I don't have a middle name, so I have undefined here. I could also put an empty string, anything like that. So now undefined is a falsy value. So in JavaScript, there's values that are interpreted as false. And so undefined is one, zero is one, empty strings are another, etc. Now we wanna take this array of my name and make it my full name. So we're gonna use my name and then call join with an empty string with a space inside. So it'll take each element of this and add a space in between them. So now let's print out this full name and see what happens. Sweet, it looks like it's working, but if you look closely, there seems to be two spaces in between true and Narla. And we don't want that, we just want one. So how do we fix this? So some code just showed up. So here we have a new variable filter my name, which takes that my name array and calls the filter method on it. So now filter is passed in a callback function and that callback function grabs each element of that array. So filter filters out any element that doesn't meet the specified condition. So here, when I'm saying, when I'm grabbing the name, I'm going to return not not name. Not not basically results in a Boolean representation of whatever this item is. So if I do something like not not zero, it'll return false. And if I do something like not not and a string true, it'll return true. So why am I doing not not and not just passing in name, which is probably the same thing. I'm just trying to create a Boolean representation of this. It's just a little bit cleaner. You don't have to, I just like doing this. So now I'm going to console log both the full name and the filtered name so you can see the difference. Awesome, now if you look here, you can see that there's only one space here and two spaces before. Now to make this a little simpler, in this filter function, we don't actually have to have a function body with a return. We can do something called an implicit return. So we can delete all of this code and this still results in the same output. So if I run this again, you can see that we still only have a single space. Now, what if I told you we can shorten this even more? JavaScript has a built-in Boolean conversion function called Boolean with a capital B. So another way to simplify this code is we could just pass in Boolean like such. And now if we run this, we still only have a single character. All right, so now tip number two. Let's take a look at the sum and every methods on arrays in JavaScript. So here we have an array of numbers and I wanna write a function has evens that takes in an array and returns whether or not this function has an even number in it. Really quick, this needs a return false. So in this has evens function, what I'm doing is I'm writing a for loop that goes across the array. And then if any element in that array mod two is zero, which means it is an even number, I'm going to return true. But if we go through the whole for loop and don't find an even number, we're just going to return false. So if I console log this, this will return true. Now, what if I told you we can write this in one line of code? So we could use something called the sum method, which is a built-in array method in JavaScript. So if we take a look at the code here, the sum method basically tests whether or not at least one element in the given array passes the test that's defined in the function. So if sum returns true, that means that at least one of the elements in this array passes the given test and the test is defined as such. So now if we print this, you can see that it also returns true. Now, similar to sum, there's an every method. So for every, every element in the array has to pass the given test for it to return true. If not, it returns false. So given this array up here, this should print out false. And then now given this array too, this should return true, which it does. So here's a third tip. Let's say you want to remove duplicate items in an array. So here I have an array with A, B, A. So now I'm trying to get the unique array from this by calling filter on the array. So in this filter, I'm grabbing the item and the index. Now here we're using this index of function. And what this does is it returns the index of the first occurrence of the value in the array. So let's go through this array real quick and look at index of. If we go through, we hit A first. And so the index of A is zero. And now does that equal to A's position in the array? And it is because A, this A is at zero. So it passes. Now let's say we get to this last A. So now the index of A in this array is zero because that's the first occurrence of it. But the current index of the one you're at is two. So this is going to return false which means it'll be filtered out of this array. So if I console.log this unique, I only get A and B, which is correct. But this code is kind of confusing and it doesn't make a lot of sense. So let's make it easier to understand. So now if you look at this code, we're constructing this thing called a set and passing in the array. Now a set is an object in JavaScript that has a unique property, which is basically everything inside a set is also unique, which means no two things can occur more than once. So if we pass this array into set, 
it will just get rid of the second A for us. And now this fancy thing is just a spread operator. So we are grabbing all the elements of the set and spreading it into this new array. And so now if I console.log this, we still end up with just A and B, but much less code to write. So here's the next trick. So let's say I have this function greet that takes an A name and I'm going to console.log hello and the name. But if the name is null or undefined, I'm going to say friend instead of the name. So now here we have a username mutru and I'm going to call greet on that. And then I'm going to change the username to undefined and then call greet on that. So now let's see what happens. As expected, it prints out hello mutru and then hello friend. But did you know there's a better way to write this ternary operator in the greet function? There's this really cool operator called the nullish coalescing operator. So we're going to use this double question mark, which is the nullish coalescing operator. Whenever the left side of this operator is either null or undefined, it will return whatever the right side is. So if I print this out again, we get the same thing as before. Now I know what you're thinking. There's also the logical or operator, but there's one key difference between the nullish coalescing operator and the logical or operator. Now in the nullish coalescing one, if the left-hand side was null or undefined, it would return the right-hand side. For the logical or, the left-hand side needs to be a true or false value. So if this name can be converted to true, then it will return that, else it will return this friend. So if we take a look and print this, it returns the same thing. But here's a downfall of using the logical or. So here I have a timeout function that's called bad timeout. And inside that we're setting a timeout and we're going to console.log hello. And the timeout that we're gonna pass is either a timeout that's being passed in, or we're just gonna pass one second. So I'm going to call bad timeout on zero, which means that it should console.log hello immediately. But when I run this, it takes about a second to actually print out hello. So what's happening? With the logical or, it's converting the timeout to a Boolean. And now we know JavaScript, zero is a falsy value, which means that this evaluates to false. So it will default to the 1000. So instead of this, if we use the nullish coalescing operator and run the same code again, it should immediately output the hello. So yeah, there you go. Now my next tip is a little bit of a fun one, but I'm sure you've used the sort method on arrays before. And you know that a sort method takes in two values, A and B. But do you ever remember exactly which order you need to put the A and the B to go in ascending order versus descending order? So here's a little trick to help you with that. Instead of using A and B, use A and Z. So now this kind of functions like the alphabet. So you know that A to Z is ascending. So when you do A minus Z, you're going in ascending order. And if I print this out, you can see that it's one, two, three, four, five. And if we do Z minus A, we know that we're going in descending order. So really dumb, but kind of useful. So this next trick is about destructuring. So here I have that same my name array with true, undefined, and narla. And now here I'm grabbing my first, middle, and last name by just indexing into that array. So when I console.log first, middle, and last, it grabs my first, middle, and last name properly. But let's do this in a cleaner way. Okay, so let's remove all this. We can use something called destructuring. For destructuring an array specifically, we're going to use the square brackets similar to how we have square brackets up here. So now in this, we can actually define first, middle, and last. And now what this does is this looks at the array that's being passed in here, and it'll destructure elements out of that array to match what you're passing in here, right? So this first aligns with true, this middle aligns with undefined, and the last aligns with Narla. So if we print this out, it returns the same thing as it did before. Now, a really cool part of destructuring is let's say you only want the first item. You could actually just grab the first one by doing this. And so if I print this, it'll just grab true. The other cool thing we can do is use the spread operator. So here I'm grabbing the first and I'm going to do dot, 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 which is the spread operator and write rest. So now if I console.log first and then I console.log rest, you can see that first is true and rest is the array without that first element. Destructuring arrays is really cool especially when you know the structure of the array. So instead of indexing into it, you can just assign variable names immediately. So similar to deconstructing an array, you can also deconstruct objects in JavaScript. So here I have an object person, and here I'm grabbing the items out of person by using the curly braces that you also use to create an object. So here I'm grabbing the name, the username, and the age, and I'm printing them out. And it does print them out properly. One of the cool properties of destructuring objects is that you can rename the properties when you destructure them. So for example, let's say we want it to be called display name. We can rename it using the colon and passing in whatever variable name we want. So now when I console.log, I can use display name instead of username and it works just the same. 
Now here's my last tip. Have you ever wanted to create an array of some n length and you wanted to fill it with some arbitrary values? So I know a lot of people use array fill, some other wacky stuff, but I really like this method. So here I'm using the array constructor and I'm calling dot from. What's interesting is that the first argument to a from is an array like. So how is this an array like? Well, what JavaScript does is it just kind of checks for certain properties. And so since we specify a length, which is one of the properties of an array. It knows that we want to just create an array of length three. And now the from also has a second argument, which is a mapping function. So here I'm just calling a function and I'm saying return zero. So when I console.log this array, we should have an array of three items, all zero, which is what we get. Now this mapping function also takes in an item and an index. So we can do item and index, and we're not gonna actually use the item. So we're gonna just do an underscore here. We're gonna grab the index and we're going to put the index. So now this array is going to be 0, 1, 2. So if I print this out, 0, 1, 2. I use this a lot for when I want to create fake data. So if I want some array that I could map across and then do something with. So it's super useful and very easy and short to create an array with just this. No using for loops here. Well, I hope you liked this video and I hope some of these tips were useful. My dog happened to fall asleep during it, so I don't think he found it that useful, but I hope you did. If you like this content and you want more like it, be sure to subscribe. It would mean a lot. Let's also try and get a thousand likes on this video if possible. And let me know down below if you want to see anything else.